more on the looming rail strike, let's bring in Peter Kennedy, railroad trackman. He's also the director of strategic coordination and research for the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees, the BMWED, which represents workers who build and maintain tracks nationwide. Thank you so much for being here, Peter. Let's bring up call for number three, control room. This is what the tentative deal initially that your union uh, rejected. It brought up a 14% salary hike. Now for union workers, a 24% salary hike by the end of this five-year agreement in 2024. It means that the average salary for those who work in, in freight trains would be $160,000 annually. That's, that's about the top 10% of all industries in this nation. Yet the talks have stalled over the sick pay dispute. Can you explain to me why your union is one of the four of, of the 12 unions uh, that decided, you know, they didn't want to agree to this deal because of sick pay? Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for having me on. Well, first of all, let me clear something up. Railroad track maintenance workers are the second lowest paid craft in the industry out of the 12. And I've seen some numbers floating around out there through the AAR who represents the railroad's interests. And they say that a railroad track maintenance worker may, or a railroader in general makes about $130,000 a year with benefits. Well, a track maintenance worker would have to work over 3,000 hours a year just to make $130,000 if you're including benefits in there. So even with this raise, our workers are still not even gonna be anywhere close near that $160,000 a year in income unless they simply just live their entire lives out on the railroad. Now, with that being said, that's exactly what's going on right now. Railroad workers, uh, they've watched their coworkers, about 45,000 of them to be exact, get slashed from the workforce over the last seven years. And now they're left maintaining the st track structure under the same or pretty much the same rail traffic. So they're doing a lot more work with a lot less people. And it's pretty much been ruining their lives for the last seven years. And in this context, the railroads just continue to rake in record profits. They're not doing anything to try and improve the work life balance for their workers. And so that's the big reason why workers rejected it. They don't have paid sick days. They need paid sick, day, paid sick days because life happens. And when it happens, you got to have some sort of protection against that. The Biden appointed presidential emergency board rejected this proposal to add paid sick time. Let's uh, go to call for number one here. Disputes over those issues, however, are best resolved in the grievance and arbitration process, not by an overly broad and very costly proposal that would create 15 paid days a year that while nominally labeled as sick leave days would be structured to be used on demand as a means of permitting employees to better balance work life needs and would effectively be personal days that could not be denied for any reason by the carriers. This presidential emergency board recommended not to have paid sick leave. Yes, they did. And so let me just back up a little bit and the reason why we asked for 15 paid sick days. Uh, when we look back in history, bargaining tends to be a process or a function of history. And we've been asking for 15 paid sick years, 15 paid sick days for over five decades now, for over 52 years to be exact. And we've never gotten any of them. And so we asked for the same number that we have historically. But since that happened, we've asked for seven paid sick days, similar to the structure that exists under Executive Order 13706, which provides paid sick days of up to 56 hours per year minimum for any sort of federal government contractor. And the railroads, by the way, are federal government contractors. And yet somehow railroad workers are exempt from that. And so we've asked for paid sick days. We're down to seven. We've even offered... Uh, to voluntarily agree to four paid sick days. Even though Black Friday's over, the unions are still willing to agree to four paid sick days if the railroads want to get a good deal here on this. Peter, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not your union is using uh, the holidays here as a way to negotiate this. They know that this the economy is under pressure right now, especially under the holidays. What's your response that you guys are are doing this with the holidays to help with your negotiation? Well, I want to make it very clear. We have no desire to go on strike. We have no desire to inter interrupt anybody's holidays. In fact, railroad workers would like nothing more than to be home on the holidays, too. So this is not being used as leverage. This is the way the process That's has played out. Nice. And, and so with that being said, oh, the only thing I could add to this is that if the railroad workers were to go on strike, we believe that we would be able to obtain paid sick days because, as you've heard numerous times, it costs about $2 billion a day to the economy if the railroads shut down. What we're asking for is a little over 10% of that. That's not asking for much. We're literally asking for one penny of every dollar to provide paid sick days to every railroad worker in this industry. And I'll only add this too. What could be more Christmas-like than the Ebenezer Scrooges of the world given the hardworking Bob Cratchit some pittance in the form of paid sick days? It would be perfect timing for the holiday season.
Peter, I don't have a lot of time here, but quickly, has the president directly involved himself in this negotiation as of now? And are you okay with Congress potentially stepping in if there can't be a negotiation by December 9th? So I have not spoken personally with Biden, but I do know that the administration has been directly involved They're in engaging in discussions with the president BMWD, as well as the other organizations. Uh, I will say this, that the Biden administration has been very helpful in facilitating discussions between the parties. Without them, the railroads won't even engage with us in any meaningful or substantive bargaining. Um, that being said, we really would not like Congress to intervene. Our preference would be that the railroads would voluntarily agree to provide paid sick days so that we can avoid this whole sort of uh, standoff here. But if Congress does intervene, we hope that they side with the workers and not bail out the railroads here by giving the railroad workers the tentative national agreements and plus seven paid sick days. Peter Kennedy.